Once again, this is Gail Massena with History Quick, and our guest today is Holly Growl, and she is showing us a close-up of what it, it all happens when you are using a spinning wheel. Holly, show us. Hi. Hi, this is what I look like, but you'll be looking at my hands and fiber here, so you don't need to see my face. Okay, well, I kind of have it ready. It's set up. Um, we are going to spin fiber. This is wool. It's See, it's, it's not held together. It just comes apart, and we need to twist that so it'll stay together, and it forms a yarn, and therefore then you can make clothes out of it. So, the like I said earlier, um, the wheel's powering this. The bobbin has to move a different speed of the flyer so it'll all work, and it can twist it and go up on there without me having okay. to do anything. Okay, here we go. So this and is you're already that, okay. You're making that wheel spin by your foot on the oh, tread. Yes, yes, I have my foot. It's not very oiled very well. Normally, I don't have to put my hand on it, but um, it's kind of stiff, so okay. I, it's old. So give it a break, you know. Yeah, I okay. understand. <laughs> so basically, you're taking the wool and you're pulling it out, which is called drafting. So it is not all in one chunk you're layering it so it grabs onto the one next to it and therefore when it's twisted then it turns into yarn i hopefully you can see that i'm trying to make a thicker yarn so you guys can see it but see this this part behind my thumb is pure fiber and then in front of my thumb that's turning to yarn as i'm as i'm spinning and when it goes up on the bobbin it's it's a yarn ready to go. Um, like I said earlier, most yarns are two ply to make it stronger. So um, after I would fill a whole bobbin of this single, I'd get another one full of the single. Here's two here. I got some on it. And then I would do what is called plying, which is you're spinning those two together to make a finished a finished product and some some you some yarns have more than two you can have three you can have four you can have it just depends on what you're making so i th think you can see how how that single that close single is made do you control in. how thin or how thick uh the yeah. yarn is? yes it depends on i mean you can you can just have a couple like real quick, uh -huh. um, see how that is so thin. And then you control the amount of fiber that goes in there. I can put that whole thing in there and twist it. And therefore that's gonna make a thicker yarn. I would think it would be a lot, of, a lot of skill and a lot of practice mm -hmm. that make it so that your yarn is consistent in its thickness as, you, as you're making it, as you're spinning. Yeah, um, when you first start, you make yarn that you could probably never replicate again that's really <laughs> thick and thin, thick and thin. And then when you get better and, you know, your goal is to make consistent yarn, you just feel like you can't make something like that because it just bothers you because uh -huh. it's just not right. <laughs> How long have you been spinning? Um, I think about 13 years now. Okay. I saw a spinning wheel at a yard sale. My other passion is buying, buying stuff at yard sales and auctions and stuff. And I thought, oh, I'm going to get that. It was $20, and it changed my life. <laughs> very cool. I just totally fell in love with it. I was kind of self-taught. Um, then I enrolled in the master's per, or master spinner program from a Canadian college. And that kind of stalled out because we kind of lost some people. And uh, maybe at some point we'll, we'll start start doing that again okay now tell tell us what you're doing there you're you're working out of habit but this is new for us i'm kind of i'm kind of winging it since uh since for time but like like let's say this bobbin was empty i'm getting the two okay. ready to go and um therefore i'm gonna oh i messed up <laughs> there's always mistakes in everything <laughs> okay I'm just going to get it ready to fly. Sounds like there's a lot of good life lessons in spinning. Yes. You know what? The thing is patience. A lot of people, they'll sit down and be like, well, I can't spin a consistent yard. I'm done. And, you know, it takes years to get to that point in patience. Mm -hmm. And it takes a long time to just do one bobbin. 
So, you know, you can't. So when you see hand spun yarn and you think it's expensive, that's because it took probably about 10 hours to make. <laughs> wow. Yeah. But I don't care. I, I just enjoy it. It's very meditative. Okay, so I got the two flies of the singles on here. It'll work with me. And I'm, I spin it opposite of what I did before oh. to take some of the tension out. Because if I spun it all in the same direction, it would be a, a tangled up mess. It'd be too much yeah. energy going the same direction. So this way, when you spin it, spin it so the wheel is going counterclockwise, it's taken a little bit of the energy out. And I don't know if you could see that. That's what you think of yarn. Uh -huh. in the store is a two-ply two-ply yarn. That's what we're fam more familiar with then. Yeah, yeah, because when you think of a single, it's like, well, what am I going to do with that? I mean, you can do things with it, but most of the time you want something thicker, you know. It adds it more strength. Stronger. Yeah, yes, it adds more strength. It adds more warmth a lot of times. And when you were talking about if you want to spin it thin, that's for something you want to be durable. If you want to spin it thick where, you know, there's more air in between the fibers, that's for something you want to be very warm because it holds the air and it holds the warmth in more. There's a lot of stuff to, about spinning that, a lot of science behind it. Apparently. So what, what's the difference between thread and yarn? Or is there, is there a difference I really? Think, I've, we've spun thread before. It's kind of just... That is kind of just a one ply, just very, very tightly spun. Okay. And then the yarn is is more of a looser and like more more ply. You know, thread has to be so much more stronger than yarn, you know, to hold the cloth together. And you know, yarn just you know makes stitches and so. What kind of fibers can you use for spinning? Oh gosh, there is a lot. You can use wool. Um, you can use alpaca. A lot of people are familiar with that. You can use llama. Um, you can use um, hemp or linen. I've done some linen. That's interesting, um, which comes from the flax plant. Um, honestly, I've actually spun dog hair, <laughs> and it made a very soft, nice yarn. Some people have a hang-up about it. But if you have a dog like a, like a Great Pyrenees or or something that you have to brush, a, you know, the undercoat out of, you can totally spin that. I think golden retriever you can actually do, but it, you know, I'm, I thought it made a nice yarn. Very nice. What do you do? I, I was noticing earlier when you were spinning just the one ply, when you run out, how do you attach the next oh, that, yarn? Or that, is another mile, that is another milestone of newbies. Let me, okay, so let's say, I can, I can make this back into a, a single. I probably should have mentioned that earlier. My apologies. Oh, no, you know what? I, yeah, you know what? I thought about it earlier, and I, I didn't go there. Um. <laughs> oh, here we go. Okay, so I got. I'm putting my single back on, and this is. Where's my hook? This is a hook. They call it orifice hook because this is called an orifice. It's the hole that the um, that the yarn goes into after it's spun, and it's kind of hard to get get it through there. So I'm pulling it back. Okay. So let's say I'm spinning, and oh no, I ran out or I broke it. <laughs> I used to break. I used to break it a lot when I started. Um. Now it's just like oh, big deal. You basically kind of just, because you have the loose fibers, I make sure I have loose fibers. And on the stuff you're working with, loose fibers, you just kind of lay it over and it'll just grab. It'll just grab it. And it's like you never even knew that just it broke. Going. Yeah. I can see how this would be a very calming thing to do, except for the frustration when it didn't go the way that I wanted. 
Yeah, yeah like I said, you have to have a lot of patience to keep going. And you know what? You got to get used to um, just listening to things. Like, I can talk to people and stuff, but, uh, you know, you still have to kind of pay attention. You have to, you have to keep your eyes on it, you know? All right. Okay, Holly, I think that that will probably pretty well wind us up for today. I thank you for all of the information and all the things that you've yeah. shared. I am, I am really quite fascinated by this whole thing. Okay, guys, at Holly, stand by, and I'll see you in just a minute. And thanks, everybody, for being with us again today. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.